my baby, why we say my grace? Head on collision, ha, God the position when the enemy be tripping, only he, he can fix your head up, hey, yeah, yeah, face to face, the word of God and why we live by faith, say by grace. You could be going through a hard time you can't see, people talking with no understanding. I come from here, been through here, I just had to breathe. They were seen, now was humble, why you envy me? Sometimes I'm down, sometimes I'm up, all I need is God to fill my cup. Keep my cup on for, run and I keep my cup on for. Sometimes I'm down, sometimes I'm up, all I need is God to fill my cup. Keep my cup on for, run and I This is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked. All right, all right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You're listening to Late Night with Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. That's right. My co-host tonight is Kimmy Kim, which I don't see her in the queue yet. So anyway, we got a special guest who will be joining us at 915. I don't see him in the queue yet. So maybe I gave people the wrong number. I don't remember. What's going on, Batman? Well, anyway, y'all, shout out to all our veterans that's out there. I named a few family members. So a few minutes ago, all of them served in, in the Army, the Navy, the Marines. Pretty much all, my family was all over. But I think my my uncle served in the Air Force, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. And my dad was in the Army. Uncles and Marines, Navy, cousins. Yeah, I think everybody served but me and my brother, <laughs> as far as first cousins is concerned. <laughs> yeah, reserves and everything. Yeah, we, we decided, uh, you know, we wanted to go to college first, and then we was going to see what's going on after that. It was kind of rough back then, you know, especially when, yeah, Reagan Nomics was in the office back then, the cowboy. It wasn't a good idea to be in the military back then. Shoot, some of us feared that there was going to be a possible draft back then. You, you know, so we figure if they need us, they call us. So they didn't need us, so they didn't call us. So anyway, shout out to the veterans for you guys that, you know, went out there and, and, and made a career out of it and retired and doing well. Um, of course, we talk to Dr. Kelly all the time. He's He has steady work with the veterans. He's still helping a lot of those guys get the benefits that's due to them. A lot of those guys have uh, suffered so much, uh, so many losses, whether it's mentally, physically, you know, limbs you name it a lot of people have lost a lot you know serving in our military during conflicts time we've been in conflict for a very very long time y'all i remember it was kind of rough when we were doing a cold war but now you know dealing with the middle east and 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 a lot of you know terrorism that's going on in the world um you know our guys are in harm's way all the time all the time so uh, our prayers definitely go out um one of the things that had helped launch positive power um, uh, we, a couple of years ago, we had, uh, had a couple authors on the show and they were from overseas and things just jumped off from there. Uh, we have a lot of Christian listeners from, from over in Germany and all the different, um, air bases and, you know, all the bases that's over there, whether they, uh, visible or hidden, <laughs> they tune into us on, on the internet, which is a good thing. And, and it's so great to have an internet because these guys are able to tune in to the homeland and, and listen to what's going on. Uh, you know, this good thing called podcast. That's right. I know a lot of you guys call it radio, but you know, it's, it's really, internet radio is really podcast in, in the way of speaking. So anyway. Uh, shout out to our military men and women that's serving overseas and, um, you know, doing that thing for us and keeping us, um, out of harm's way and defending our country. That's right. All right, y'all. We, um, I don't know what happened to Kimmy Kim. Uh, usually her and I, we on the line chatting about this time and, uh, we're going to have Kimberly Adair going to be joining us at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're supposed to be having Dr. Kevin Rames. He is, he's a holder of three gold rectors. You know, he, he was, uh, one of the big producers, uh, that helped, uh, with the success of Tupac Shakur. If you guys remember him, um, he had a big hit called Pain and that was part of the Above the Rim, uh, soundtrack and, and I guess a couple others. And he was, he's supposed to be here to talk to us about some of the advocate work he's doing, uh, in the community with the kids. You know, a lot of kids, you know, kids are, you know, influenced by success, you know, um, whether it's the record industry is, is, is sports, you know, it's, it's good when these guys can, you know, 
come from behind their offices, whether they retired or still playing or still in the game, and go out there and, and, and give back something to these kids. And a lot of times the kids just want you to tell your story. You know, they don't understand sometimes that you were exactly where they were where they are right now you know sitting in that chair listening to somebody whether you know you got good grades or bad grades you you were one of those kids and um sometimes the kids need to hear that just because they're going down the wrong path right now it's not too late to turn it's change gears and, and switch it into you know the right direction and a lot of times they think they're doomed and it's, the game is over and, and you know just down here but you know we gotta let, let them know it's okay to make mistakes you learn from your mistakes and um you know of course some you know you hear that a lot that it's okay to make mistakes but, but then you sit down for your evaluation <laughs> it's a different ball game then so that's why you know it's kind of you know confusing the kids when you're in school and and you're hanging it's okay to make mistakes you learn from it but then when you start working in the working world uh, a, a mistake can cost you your your livelihood and um so it's kind of confusing sometimes especially with our new generation of kids you know you tell them something they're going to hold on to that they're not going to let they go say remember you said this and remember you said that they don't forget they do not forget now i know you know having three kids myself <laughs> i just i can't promise stuff and don't deliver so before i make a promise and don't use the word promise with them <laughs> you're really in for it because <laughs> that's where it weighs like gold so you gotta be careful what you tell these young people these days you know just tell them you're there with them and you're gonna do your best to whatever you know you, you want to try to do for them but uh you know it's always good to um you know if you're a positive influence uh, with our youth and you're working with youth, you know, you, you really got to, you got to walk, you got to walk the, 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 uh, that, that road, man. And cause they watching you, they're listening to you and they're watching you. So you have to be careful with those, those mistakes that you make as an adult, you know, cause they watching and they listening very carefully. All right. Well, I don't know what happened to Kimmy Kim cause she, she spoke in Germany tonight, but anyway, we're going to listen to another song. And when we come back, uh, I'm trying to get uh, Kimberly Adair's music downloaded so we're going to be able to check out her new hit single. So let's hear one from Never, Neva, Neva Ford Nation. I actually had a pleasure of meeting Neva Ford Nation. That's right. The Batman had a chance to finally meet Neva. And they weren't even on my, on my list of people to meet. They just happened to have been there. A lot of the artists from Texas was in Atlanta for the Spin Awards a couple weekends ago. And shout out to Mr. Point and her crew. And a very nice ceremony i mean it was sold out jam-packed to the house and um she, neva and jason was there in the studio uh with jay williams uh over at 108 praise and we had a great time uh it was just a big surprise you know i, I, I didn't know what to expect you know and we was hanging out with t-rex was there you know he he tours with uh with life jennings and and um trevon Perry was there i uh, got his video running on music vision awesome video so it was so great uh meeting these people so anyway let's hear one from from neva ford nation this one's called walk with me Not be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with us. In every situation, whatever you may be going through, don't be ashamed to ask the good Lord to walk with you. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Hold my hand, Lord. 
You see, I will lift my eyes to the hill to which cometh my help. Had my help surely coming from the Lord. And the Lord is that shade upon their right hand. The Lord shall preserve that shade. That coming out and going in for this time and forevermore. Be my keeper. Yeah, my friend. I say, Lord, you keep me. Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, family, thank you for tuning in, and we apologize. Um, our nine fifteen guest Kevin uh, Rames will have to be rescheduled. Um, we will let you guys know when we be able to get him back on here. So, meanwhile, we got Kimmy Kim is here. What's up, Kimmy Kim? Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm awesome. What's going on with you in your neck of the woods? What's going on, Elation Radio? What's up? Radio Magazine was still grinding for the Lord. Um, just basically, uh, I took this day off, just relaxing my mind and getting prepared for the unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The event and like that. Yeah, it's going to be right. amazing. That's right. That's right. So um, did you guys have the um, the awards show, the honors yet? Was that this weekend past? We have the Elation Honors on November the 17th. And it's this weekend. Oh, is this weekend coming? Okay, that's right. It was the weekend after the TAP Awards. Yeah, shout out to uh, Dr. Terrell Jenkins. We got to find out how the, how the awards went. Of course, we were scheduled to go out there, but um, some rescheduling had to be done. I had a, Actually, I had an appearance with the veterans. Uh, that's right, in Ocean City, Maryland, uh, this past, uh, well, today. That's right. So um, it, would, it was a pretty tough schedule for the Batman. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get out there next year. And um and you've do been, things. You've been traveling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know this has been a real rainy season, and you know, is there so much been going on? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still recovering from the trip to Atlanta be, in Hampton because remember I had to go to Hampton's homecoming to hang out with my wife and my daughter, and then I had to fly right to, uh, right out of Newport News straight into Atlanta, and um, that thing was nonstop. I didn't even shoot. I think I had four hours of sleep, and I couldn't sleep on the plane because. Wow. Um, my um my travel well I wouldn't say he was my travel companion but my the person I was sharing the road with he had the he had the uh, the shakes <laughs> yeah one of our military oh, wow. guys yeah I was like why is the plane shaking it was him he was just shaking yeah I, I couldn't sleep I, I wanted to sleep but Batman couldn't sleep so anyway so uh, we ended up getting into Atlanta and then it was nonstop we was off the Jay Williams show with one oh eight. And then uh, straight after that, we checked in, and then next thing you know, we're on a red carpet, you know, talking to wow. talking to the best in the yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We was hoping to see you there, Kimmy Kim. You had promised us you was yeah, coming I had an to the spin. So I come. Yeah, you couldn't do that. Yeah, I understand. Next year, next but year, next we year? always got next year. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm almost positive this is going to be. Well, I call it a fan reunion because, you know, you get a chance to see all the people from our industry, you know, not just the, you know, yeah. the artists, but our, our industry, you know, the people that, that spin the hits, you know, to make things, make things happen. Yeah. I believe in um, definitely, um, you know, collaborating. I believe that's important. 
Oh, yeah. I believe that's important because we can learn from each other. Yeah, Absolutely. not just that. The thing about it is, too, this, this universe is so humongous. There's just so much room for everybody, you know. That's yes. the thing. It's so much room. You don't have room. to hate on someone because they're doing well. Pray for them. Because, you know, they're getting attacked already. They don't need another hater, you know. I really believe collaboration works. And that's why we serve a God who is so big that he can bless you, Jerry. Uh, he can bless Mr. Appointed and me all at the same time. Oh, yeah. He's doing it every day. Yeah, man. He's, yes. ooh, man. I mean, just to um, let everybody know, um, we got a, we got some great, great film projects coming up, and I think everybody is going to be so pleased. Um, we got some collaboration projects coming up with a number of artists. Um, we're, we're working with some uh, some guys out of the out of the DC area. So I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag right now. But once we finish taping and everything, we got a we got a real pleasant surprise uh, for okay. everybody. Um, I mean, What's going on? You can tell me a little bit. I won't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But you know, just like we um we've been you know uh letting everybody know how uh you know we got these concert opportunities open up for people to to come on Gospel Star Experience where you have an opportunity to go live and and you know you know you're you're fifteen thirty minutes of fame you know right in front of the camera doing your thing Absolutely. and um, of course you know we just aired um. Uh, my journey with Paula G episode six. Uh, you'll be able to catch that on Thursday on WATC okay. two or 57.2 in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with WATC and everybody know them for Atlanta live. Well, uh, Paula G show is, is doing super well. You can catch it on YouTube on you catch it on positive power. You catch it on Facebook. And, uh, we just released, um, Episode six, um, right on Music Vision and well on my Facebook page where we have the men of worship. You guys remember men of worship? They were making a lot of noise for a minute there and uh, they're in the studio right now about to release, um, I guess their second single and, um, they under you first management with Dr. Trinnell. So, uh, you know, she got some things going on for them. They, they've been touring. They've been all over the East Coast and, um, they've been here in, uh, Charm City. So uh, we we looking forward to uh, getting getting uh, a live uh, concert from those guys. So that's what they're working on now, trying to get their um, I guess their EP together. So we're excited. So you be able to hear them their interview with their manager Al Carter and one of the the lead singers um, Keith Bailey. Uh, so you can be able to catch an episode six with my my journey with Paula G the Voice. So check it out, y'all. Right on my page, or you catch it on Music Vision. So that's the kind of great stuff that's happening. Um, we're you know, you remember, Kim, you remember how, how when, um, when, when Magic Johnson and Queen Latifah and Arsenio Hall, when they, when they busted on the late night scene, how many artists was being discovered and was blowing up? Do you remember that era? You remember that? I do. I was in that era. Yeah. So, you know, this, this kind of reminded me a little bit of that, you know, with, with opportunities opening up for, for independent television stations and producers and directors. Cause before, you know, I was talking to, um, I had a pleasure of talking to, uh, TV one, Miss V, Miss V, you know, Miss V, she's, she's award winning, you know, uh, radio host out of the DC area. And I had an opportunity to talk to her husband. He, this guy is, he is so rich for history and he was throwing all these names out to me about what was going on during that BET. Cause BET used to have a studio in DC. I'm not sure if a lot of people remember that they used to have a sound stage. I mean, this place was phenomenal. Uh, they had a restaurant there that was called a BET sound stage restaurant. And then they had all that different studios there where they, you know, they produced all these great shows like Dr. Bobby Jones and all these shows. And before they moved, yeah. cause they had a studio in New York, and they had one in California, but I think when they went under Viacom or whoever they went under, they ended up moving everything out to, um, to New York. I mean, LA, out to LA. But before that, he was telling me how it was all these guys was directing these phenomenal showcases, you know, that was on BET. And, um, and he okay. said, since that left, he said, we really don't have no real TV studios here now. And I was telling him, well, you know, Look out for the internet because you, you have some, some new cats. Now, of course, you know, you don't have a lot of too many young people that's venturing into television for, for independent gospel, but a lot of them are, are more into dramas. You know, they doing short films, documentaries, 
a lot of that kind of stuff. That's basically what a lot of the young filmmakers, they into a lot of that action stuff, horror movies. Uh, that's real popular with them. So you won't see their stuff probably in our genre. But there are a lot of young people that's, that's, that have created film production companies. You know, just that I don't think this is just one of the genres that they're interested in. So, you know, I, I'm not I'm not saying the positive power is it, but uh, we 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 just collaborated. We're forming some collaborations with some um some some very aggressive marketeers out there and a production company. So, guys, look out for some some great opportunities for you artists because um um some of the talk shows we're working on are, are gaining a lot of momentum right now you know we're going to put some more um, um resources into late night with jervis live i actually have a co-host that's going to be joining me for the first day of course you guys remember just just me on the set well we're going to be joined by zenobia they call her miss z she's actually a screenwriter and director in the theater world she's actually a makeup artist too well she's an actress so she's going to be um helping me with late night so we're going to be trying to bring some talent from the delmarva area on on the screen so you guys so so we can share what people are doing in the acting world the music world you know you know the entertainment and we're going to try to bring some religious um uh uh, leaders uh to the show as well so so that's some of the stuff that we're looking to produce um out of out of um 21 studios and here at wayne manor studios that's what we're I mean, excited what god is placed on our plate we gotta get kimmy kim out here so she can get on the show i'm coming out there very soon trust me all right i gotta i gotta take a um about to you because um, your vision is getting bigger and it's actually, you know, coming to light. I still remember our first conversation back in 2014, no, 2015. So I see, yeah, you see it happening. God is definitely moving on your behalf and Amen. I see that being a success as well. That's right. God, God is good. God, God is good. You put all your things into it. That's why I wish you could have came. But next year, it's the third weekend. Third in weekend November, in November. All right, we we'll put that on our calendar to make it happen. So I get my but ticket you know early. What? Get my ticket. I'm just gonna put this on the air. Um, you know, you park, you're gonna be one of our honorees next year for media. So uh, make sure you come. Hey Amen. Do, do, do I get a yeah. chance to do a speech? Can I do a uh-huh. speech? Do I get a chance to do a three minute speech? <laughs> Cause last time I did two minute speech, the music came on. <laughs> oh, you do. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you get five minutes when you get an uh, honoree right. uh, from Emasis. We give you five minutes and then, you know, tell people about who you are. All right. Absolutely. All right. Good, good. Well, so I'm just letting you know, I'll be one of our honorees for media next year. All right. So. I appreciate it, Kimmy. Kim, you're so sweet. Well, look, um, look like um, our guest just arrived in, in the queue. Um, Mr. Kevin Rames is here. We'll get a chance to get to know him. So uh, so we'll be able to talk to him at 10 o'clock, and then we have um, uh, Kimberly Adair is going to join us at 10 o'clock. So let's bring our guests on, and let's chat with him a little bit, get to know him. What's going on, Mr. Rames? Welcome to Positive Power. How are you, sir? Awesome. How are you? Uh, Great. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I came off of a prayer line and different things. Um Hey, it's, it's it's great. I saw the text and I was like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> I'm call in and, and say, "Hey, it's an honor to be here." Amen. And hello, everybody. All hello. right. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Amen. That's What's going on. Yeah, that's Kimmy Kim. She's uh, from Relation Radio. I was. I think I sent you an email that you know. Um, you know, if you want to keep this. Um, you know this this podcast going. Uh, uh, Elation okay. Radio is one of those places where uh, you know some people gonna reach out. I know you reached out to Johnny Ross and and he uh, connected us with you and and here you talking to Kimmy Kim and so we're gonna we're gonna get your uh, your testimony okay. and your and your great work out there as far as we can get it within our powers. Absolutely. All right, all right. So thank you, Doctor Rains, for joining us. Before we get started, sir, and um, and and tell we want everybody we want everybody to get a chance to get to know you a little bit. So tell us in your own words, yeah, you know, who is wow. Doctor Kevin Rains? Who is this guy? Well, I'm just a regular individual that had a passion for music when I lived in New York, born and raised in Harlem, and moved to Queens. And when I moved to Queens, I moved around every rapper that you. No, from the old school, from Run to Tribe Called Quest, 50 Cent, mm. and all these guys. New York was always a town where if you know how to do it, you did it in your own way. And I got involved in 
that and we were different, which as time progressed, we started working with different people like Nas, Tupac, and mm. almost Biggie before he passed. Yeah. So that pretty much started my career. I was with a group and, you know, as time went on, you know, your life changes, you mature and I became a Christian. And, you know, it was like, wow, I was in the music industry, well-known music producer, now I'm here with Christ. And it's like I felt like my past really wasn't worshiping God, but mm. the Spirit told me it was no time is, is wasted, no process is was, wasted. That mm. was my process. Mm. So I used that influence to impact culture. So sometimes we live in a world that's like, oh, I don't believe that. Even in Bible days, they didn't believe a lot of things unless something happened that really changed their minds. Mm -hmm. So for me to stand in front of people with a suit and tie on or whatever, and I say, hey, how many of you want to see the power of God? And they're looking at me like, really? Like I'm a magician, right? Mm -hmm. Put on a baseball cap, pull out my gold and platinum records, and they go, oh, my God. Yeah, oh, my God. You thought you was talking to a minister. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. You're talking to the, the one who became born again. But my past was this. So it impacts a room to only show the power of God, not to show the power that I had to produce Tupac Shakur. So in this, anyway, I, I always, I'm, I'm very radical. Mm -hmm. So it's not just to be a holy roller, but only to turn people on to Christ, not turn people off to Christ. So... I like to impact the youth or even adults for that matter to to just let this get put out there in a, in a dark world that his power is still here. It never left. Yes, so, yes. Any platform that I can get on to tell my testimony, because that's pretty much what it is. I mean, yes, I can preach the gospel. I can teach Bible study. But I think there's no better sermon than your testimony. That's right. Amen. In that sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's in a nutshell. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I feel you. And I, I, I know Kevin, um, you know, traveling, I traveled the, the streets of Harlem a little bit because my grandmother, uh, you know, she, she owned a home in Long Island and, and, uh, they call it, uh, that's, we call it Wheatley, Strong. but there's other, okay. you know, Deer Park, you know, Long Island. And, yeah. You know, you got people okay. from Jamaica. You had a lot of West Indies living there, a lot of DJs. And growing up in the streets in Baltimore, you know, we got a chance to, to party a lot with the guys coming out of New York, the big DJ, because Public Enemy stayed in Baltimore and LL Cool J. And we had a lot of time we had chances to open for those guys being DJs. And uh, the clubs, you know, the clubs in Baltimore was always rocking because once you went past Baltimore, you was dealing with the go-go over in D.C. And I don't think the, uh, the New York guys right. weren't really in the go-go. So I remember, oh, yeah. I remember. We it. That's right. Y'all weren't. That's right. We, we, we was just, you know, we just uh, accepted it because <laughs> they were our neighbors. But okay. anyway, Kevin, we understood. We, we remember what was going on back then when, when hip hop hit so hard and so much money was being made and, 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 and people were, you know, you guys were being labeled superstars and super producers. That was a lot to handle, man. You know, the popularity coming to you. So, and then a lot of you guys didn't really have no, no real role models or, or, or positive role models. You know, somebody can really take you by your bootstraps and say, Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. You know, and let's humbleize ourselves because, cause you know, you guys, I remember just being DJs. It was tough trying to be humble. You know, with the women and right. the cars, and then that's when the the chrome right. rims was coming out and the, the clothes. You know, man, how, how are you still living today, man? Tell us that. How are you still surviving? Well, see, it, it, it's all about your motivation. Mm. You got rappers who who believe and want to move culture. When it was came down to hip hop, it was more or less like, man, I want to create a song because when you listen to the song, I want you to really just really think about this or you want to be like man i got dope rhymes with these hot beeps man they're gonna feel me so you have artists and you have entertainers mm -hmm. the difference is for example you may someone may gift you with a luxury car mm -hmm. you don't care about that car you just drive it it gets dirty you're not worrying about shining it all the time and then you have an individual 
that shines every little speck of dirt on it. <laughs> every time you get out of the car. You ever see people walk away from their car and look back at it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like he cherished that car. Mm. And driving around the club 20,000 times, that's the entertainer. Mm. So in hip-hop, you have artists, you have entertainers, people who have a passion for what they do. Yeah, the money comes and you might, you know, if you don't, I'm sure you're going to die. Come on. You realize that you're losing yourself, especially when you you come back to your neighborhood and your friends don't recognize you anymore. That mm. was my wake up call. Wow. So the money, the girls, the touring and all of that, you get around other artists, not entertainers, other artists that will really talk wisdom to you. Mm-hmm. I've been in a person's mansion, I mentioned his name. I will not mention his name, but he was sitting down on his steps and he was angry. I said, sir, what's going on? He's like, man, look at this. Look at my house. I'm looking around. There's guys shooting dice over there. People there. He said, and upstairs, they're probably doing some things in my bedrooms that I just wouldn't approve of. Mm. So he said, yo, low. They called me low. He said, yo, low. If you get a mansion, make it a home, brother. Mm. Because if I kick these people out, then they're going to go back around the way saying, oh, he got it all you know, big time and he don't force. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you got to know when you're selling your soul. And yeah. we never believed in that. We believed in culture. But we, our vision for hip hop was to empower the streets because, you know, the dem became president and he had that three strikes you out. The, the, the crime bill. Mm-hmm. The crime bill was locking up a lot of men. So we believed in our concept. Mm-hmm. That I met Tupac during that time. So, yes, during those times, you can see money coming in and you and buying clothes and buying jewelry, but are you an artist? Mm. Like, hey, look at my jewelry. Ooh, I can meet all the girls in the club. Or you're like, hey, we're in the club. Let's hurry up and get up out of here. Mm. We're gone. So it's different. It's different mentalities with this. So I say that to say, been in the church, I notice, and I'm not bashing the church. Mm. I see people who can preach a good sermon, and because I used to count the offering, I used to pay guest speakers at the church when I was the armor bearer. And there were times I seen things I didn't like mm. I'm preaching a sermon because you know you're going to get a good love offering and preach where it was like at least ten bishops and everybody in line. I was the fourth speaker, and I felt so intimidated. Because everybody, it seemed like it was a competition or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, he shut the house down. You ever hear somebody say, yeah, he brought the house down. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait a minute, I'm preaching behind, or I'm teaching behind him or her. This is not supposed to be. And the spirit of, of pride and arrogance sometimes crosses over on this side. But when you are in hip hop and you have a cause and you're an artist, and you are radical with your cause, there's no room to be a, a, a sellout. There's no room to be, you know, that type of individual that's phony. To me, that's a phony person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we ever grew up with, say, money or a car, they say, oh, you brand new now. That ain't a problem. Mm-hmm. That's where you'll see who's really real with it. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I, I mean, I could go in so many areas with it, from the experiences that I've seen, even the mistakes I've made, I came back to myself. And one uh, analogy that I can give that is so profound is that, let's say you all don't like crowds. You never like crowds. You don't go to games, you don't go to clubs. You're like, man, I just don't like being around crowds. Mm-hmm. But an excellent songwriter, an excellent producer, you create songs to your surprise, so many platinum records. You have to travel. You have to go on tour. And while you're on tour, you're like, oh, my gosh. And you're telling your security, you're telling your manager, look, after I get off stage, please have the car ready in the back. Get me out of here. Mm. And you're gone. Now, imagine city after city, shows after show. You have a 164-city tour Mm. or 100 and something shows in a certain amount of months. It goes from hurry, get me out of here to now, when you're in your hotel, you're down at the hotel bar, mm. chugging down drinks, shots to escape reality. Mm. And now you become this big multi-platinum person. Now you've got to go sign autographs. 
and you're like, ooh, can I have, you hear people going, can I have your autograph? He's like, no, I'm sorry. I got to go. I got to go. And they think you have an attitude thinking you're all that. They just mm. don't know that you're in, you have an anxiety attack. Mm. And then you turn substance abuse to escape reality. Mm. So that goes on in the hip hop. Wow. A lot of people smoking and drinking because they can't handle all these eyes looking at them. Mm. Wow. So I've seen that. Like I said, there's so many areas I can go in and how people sell it's up and it's hard to come back to the real you yeah. person who probably like to plant flowers who like to cook who can make a mean ch chicken and mm. chop salad and all that stuff <laughs> mm. so the regular person so to have a desire to 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 get this this concept out that we had was on and focused with it and with us to do the first song, which was I'll If You Hear Me for Tupac. Mm -hmm. And then it led to us helping create the Hug Life form. Because it was all about empowering the streets. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I just say that in a nutshell. I don't want to go on and on. I'm going to be respectful for your time. Amen, amen. Yeah, we got you to 10 o'clock. Um, wish we could keep you long, but we can always have you back, man. We got... A lot of shows, yeah. man, and we'd love to have you yes, come on and uh, be part of our um, commentary. All right, Kimmy, Kim, you got a question for Dr. Rames? Sure. Love your testimony. Love your humbleness. Um, I, it sounds like to me you have a lot of testimonies. Would you mind sharing one of them for the audience so okay. uh, we can become inspired? I will tell you like this. I did not come to Christ in a church where I heard the preach message. What happened was we were praying for our contracts because Sony, Warner Brothers, Interscope, different people wanted us. But, you know, our parents was involved in the church. We believed in Christ, but mm. we wasn't following Christ like that. Mm. But, however, I started having these dreams and visions. And one night I, I said, Lord, if you show yourself to me, I'll represent you. I wouldn't, I mean, I just, I just needed him bad. I ain't gonna lie. It's because things was happening around me. I didn't understand why I'm having these visions. I actually felt like my life was going to be short lived. Then I was going somewhere and a man stopped me and he said, son, um, the spirit told me to tell you, I know you're on your way somewhere. But he said that prayer you prayed that night that you represent him. Mm. He said, he told me to tell you that he heard you. Wow. That right there blew my mind because I'm a realist. I'm one of those that like a fact is not a fact until it's proven. It, then it's a fact across the board. You know, you have a lot of opinions of people who swear that's fact and it's not fact. That's why we don't get along today in a lot of areas of intellect because everyone thinks what they know is fact. So that did was the turnaround. But prior to that, I was with Tupac. We was getting a carry out at a restaurant. And it was Sunday, and I'm holding the door for these, these these church mothers with some beautiful hats. So I know they were coming from church. And I opened the door for this one church mother. She said, P or not. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind y'all, I got gold teeth in my mouth. I got diamonds on. I'm like, man, I'm so with this lady. Like, I know a man of God when I see one. Mm. Our spirit showed me you. She said, you think you're going to be doing this long? Mm. And then she went into speaking in tongues. Hey, so she said, you watch my God. Mm. You watch my God. I know when a man is called. Mm. Man. Can you imagine the rest of my day from that? So, wow. Wow. So wow. here it is. Here I am now. Standing in front of people. So sometimes I got to shut down the, 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 when I'm facilitating, like, look, come on, y'all, look at me. I'm standing in front of gold and platinum records. Hmm. Telling y'all about the kingdom of God. Do you think this was something I chose to do? Hmm. No, he chose me, man. Mm -hmm. Until I was able to see him through the eyes of my heart. Develop this passion. Am I a perfect person? No, but I know that I am anointed for this time. Hmm. And that's just basically what I can say because I get a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. That was powerful. And, and you know, and you know, Kev, we know you have, wow, so 
many testimonies, so many stories, man, that could probably lead people to Christ. And, and, and I know you're probably on a mission, you know, just thinking about just, you know, 2018, uh, the, the, uh, the movie on Tupac was released and it was, uh, uh, you know, of course, not everybody approved of that, that movie with the facts, but I think for his fans, you know, not just the fans that was lovers of his music, but the people who really believed that that music was like a movement. It was speaking to us. And 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 we felt like we knew that if he would have kept going where he was going with it, that we knew this guy probably would have been a leader of the people. And they knew that. And and when you th- when you see that and you think about what happened to a lot of our past leaders, you're like, oh, wow, do you fear for them going in that direction sometime. But the time that they do have here is going to be a major impact. Do you feel like the short time he was here that he was able to not just impact you but impact his followers and these people who have moved Man. on to to Yeah, talk to us. Song and I would sit and talk to people and they say, Well, hey, by the way, what songs you did? And I run down this line as soon as I mention pain. Mm-hmm. I had people get down on one knee and kiss my hand like I'm some type of king. And I pull my hand away like, yo, don't do that, bro. Mm. And I, uh, mm. get up. He said, no, you don't know, man. He said, man, all of us in the hood, bro, we worship that song. That song was speaking to us. Mm. So I get a call one day. He said, yo, man, if you don't mind, could you please come? Because these dudes don't believe that I know you or I met you. And it wasn't like in a real day. It was part of Chicago. And I'm like, wow, okay. So I said, all right, he, you're going to be fine. Trust me. I go with him, and I'm walking to the group of guys. They all are looking at me crazy. And he was like, nah, 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 nah. this is him, man. Mm. And those looks turned into smiles mm. immediately. Hugs. Like, oh, man, it's an honor to meet you. So I'm looking at the impact that he had on ultra like, the world don't care about their communities. Mm. So if you sit here and say, oh, man, they're killing over there. What's going on? What's going on? Come on. There has to be something, some undertones, the reason for it, the reason for these mindsets. Mm-hmm. Why we have and somebody's going to love them or us. We have to get to radical ways to look out for one another. Mm. So to spoke to that and even scolding them through some words. I heard a lot of things where he was saying to where we're going, even in these areas. Mm. So I seen the impact that he had on them where they like, I mean, I'm hugging strangers and they can't believe I did certain songs and they thanking me. And he said, you don't believe me? Cool. Ran to the car. Mm. One night I was coming home from somewhere and, you know, you feel you're not in the best spirits. Come on. Sometimes you, you're feeling down. The car pull up next to me playing my song. Wow. And I look over. Dude looking over at me. I look over at him. I just I feel like saying, bro, I did that, man. You don't even got to look at me. Like you don't even <laughs> understand. Wow. But to see that still going on today, that his music is still, you know, especially the songs that I've done, are still being played and downloaded. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. Icon. All right, Kim, you got one last question for uh, Dr. Rames? Sure. Um, the, um, I like your testimony. I like your realness. What has been some of the challenges um, when you do um, serve in the community that you have come across when it comes to the young people, when it comes to why they don't come to church. I, I understand that they don't feel comfortable, but what are some of those reasons that you have encountered the reason being? Wow, that's a really good question. And I want to really be very um, neutral when I say this. You have people that are in positions in church that are not passionate for those why they are in positions. Say, for example, if you're a manager at your job, why should you be ahead of the brotherhood? Because you're a manager at your job, so the pastor feels that you manage here in the church. So I think the more the, 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 the positions that you are given, the love that's inside of you should be there to draw 
these youth. Mm. You see? So I Amen. did a youth event. I did a youth event, and I just went there. I, I went down the list. Some of y'all are doing this. Some of y'all are doing that. Some of y'all. So let me put myself on the chocolate block. I did all of the things that I just listed. I don't care who's listening. Y'all grown folks, mothers in the church. Oh, my Lord. That's right. But guess what? God wants all of that. The smokers, the cokeheads, anything what you're dealing with. Mm. Come on with me to the altar. Be the first one at the altar. Do you know all the teenagers came mm. crying and all of that? See, I think what happens is we label stuff. Hey, how many of you are dealing with this? Who's dealing with that? Come to the altar. So I ain't going to get up because I don't want nobody to think I'm dealing with what he just said. <laughs> For I real. just don't put it in a general sense. Mm. Because in Scripture, they never label what you're going through. Everybody just came to mm-hmm. worship in one mind. Mm-hmm. So here they came, came, and when it was over, the youth pastor said, no, where are my teenagers at? Come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back. And then, then the mothers of the church said, we're so sorry, Mr. Graves. He never does this. But come to find out, he was jealous because the teens did not like him. Hmm. So I take away from that is that so many times in the churches, you have people that don't really, they're not really for the Great Commission. Mm. What is the Great Commission? What really should be our mindset in the churches Mm. is bringing souls to the what? Kingdom. Mm. The kingdom. Mm. It's not about your suit. You wearing fancy suits all the time and this and that, and you walking around like, hey, brother, uh, no. No. It's about you seeing a brother coming in from the street say, hey, bro, my name is so-and-so. You know what? We have another class that you probably would more enjoy than hearing this. Not that something's wrong with it. It's just that when you put somebody in the fresh word, they're not going to be used to it. Mm-hmm. you got to come down where men can relate, where sisters can relate. But that was the greatest thing that i seen coming into the church. Mm-hmm. They didn't love me. People were moving away like I was going to snatch their purse. I'm sitting there like, y'all don't even know, man. God came to me on the street. Mm. I'm looking for somebody to confirm this. Like, hey, hey. And then one time I went and somebody confirmed it. But my thing is, I believe that there are people who don't have a genuine love for people. To be a Christian, it's him that's inside of you that will draw them in. So if you're not a people person, guess what? If you was an anal person in the world, you got saved. Somebody tell me what happened to that anal person. Like God is a magician. Poof, that anal person leaves. No, that's the area that you have to humble yourself. Anytime you feel it rising up, you have to do the complete opposite. Mm. Wow. Mm. Well, Dr. So many places I could go. I'm just saying. I know yeah. you, you got time, but praise the Lord. That's, that's what right. I, That's what I see. Mm. Wow. Well, Dr. Reigns, we thank you so much for spending time with us. We got to have you back, man. We have a program called Next Man. Though. We love for you to be part of that. We have John reach out to you also. Make sure we get you on that show. Dr. Kelly would love to have you on that. And so would uh, my son, Brandon. He feels the same way you do about some of the things you just talk about dealing with the youth, you know, bringing them to the ministry, to bring them to the kingdom. It's too much uh, politics in the churches, and we have to change that, you know. And we want to get people, um, you know, feeling good about themselves and what what uh, the ministry is about. Amen. So before you go, sir, you want to um, give everybody one last um, some encouragement or anything you'd like to leave on people's heart before I you will, go? I would encourage you this even those who've been hurt in the church. Sometimes you got to, not sometimes, all the time, you have to know. He said, I am the beginning, I am the end. Mm. So he knew about your church hurt. Maybe he uh, is pushing you somewhere else. But if he push you somewhere else, you leave with forgiveness. Because when, when God shows you the process, like that was meant to be. But look what you have done when you take an assessment of yourself. You failed because you left like all these church folks. I can't stand this church or that church. Maybe God will use you to come back to that very same church to preach a message. And you will also encourage the body. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. 
Amen. And you, you, there was a great deal of repentance yeah. during that time. And then there are those who feel like, you know, they're waiting for God to show up. And guess what? He shows up and they didn't like it. Mm. We sometimes praying for God to do something. But the way I was discipled, be happy that he showed up. Mm. Don't worry about what he blessed you with or where he took you to or what he's done. Be excited that he showed up. Search the scriptures. Anytime an angel of God showed up, anytime the presence of God showed up, they were in awe. Mm. Why aren't we in awe just for his presence? Amen. Mm. That's what I leave you with because what happened to me, I had near death experiences. And that is why you're hearing the passion in me. I don't care about this hip hop stuff. Mm. I care about somebody who feel like God is not showing them something and they are in a process that he's been showing you something. Mm. So praise the Lord, everybody. That's thank right. you for praise. having me tonight. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for those final thoughts, man. Wow. You were speaking to somebody. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. That was Dr. Dr. Kevin Rames. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And we're going to be in contact with you. We, again, we would like, love for you to be part of Next Man Up. All right, everybody. We're going to take a quick quick break. And we got uh, Miss Kimberly Adair coming up next. She got brand new music out, and she's sharing it with us. And this is one that's called Bleeding Hearts by Kimberly Adair.
You are listening to Gear Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow. Woo. Man, that was hot. Man, this sounded like Mike E was on there from Concessions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we just finished talking to Dr. Kevin Rames. Uh, you know him for his, uh, his many gold and platinum hits, uh, working with a number of the big time hip hop artists out there. A lot of them up in age now, but they still touring and doing their thing. But, uh, as you can hear, he's has, uh, devoted himself to the kingdom and he's helping youth. That's right. He's helping the youth. And sometimes the, those four walls sometimes just, just not interested, you know. It depends on who putting money in the plate. <laughs> you know, it's come down to us. I always tell people, and it's always a problem in the world with something that's always about money. You know, and money is a good thing because we need it to be able to survive and to be able to help and serve the kingdom and help people. You know, I mean, I was just listening to a presentation yesterday. Um, the pastor had visited Guatemala and he was visiting uh, families. Uh, mom had six kids and had one on the way. And, you know, she needed resources. She was pregnant and she already had five kids and living in a 200 uh, square foot apartment, you know, with five kids. You know, she needed resources. And then he was talking about how uh, the church is uh, sponsoring an orphanage over in Sierra Leone. And uh, the pastor of the church over there, well, the pastor over the orphanage is actually on 12 medications. And because his, his kidneys are failing on him because he was he was poisoned and his organs got destroyed. So he's uh, fighting for his life. But at the same time, and his wife is trying to hold down this this orphanage, you know, so that's the, that's the kind of stuff, that, you know, when you hear those stories like they say, yeah, these people need resources, they need money, you know, but then you hear how, you know, people just blow money in this country sometimes, you know, with the fame. All right. We got uh Kimberly Adairs here. That was a beautiful song. And, and that song was called Bleeding Hearts. Ooh, I just love that song. All right. Let's get Kimmy Kim back on here and um, let's talk to our guests. Kimmy Kim, woo, man, what a powerful show. You enjoying hey, yourself? Man. You enjoying yourself? I am, as always. <laughs> hey, man, I, you know that. Yeah, yeah, that was Bleeding Hearts uh, by Kimberly Adair. I can't wait to hear the second one. Woo, that was hot. Let's do it. Yeah. You it know, was. I saw Kimberly on Facebook. I think she was promoting an event that's coming up with uh, some, I think she's going to be performing with some, with some gospel artists that have that have Grammys, and I said, "Well, let me get her on my show." But it was something fantastic I saw. She has very good uh, promos out there on on her, on her uh, what she's doing for the Lord. So, Kimberly Adair, welcome to Positive Power Double XA. You talking to the Batman of late night talk radio, Charm City? What's going on? How you doing? Nothing much. How are you doing, Jerry? I'm doing fine. And thank you for holding tight. Um, uh, you know, we saw we 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 thought we had we had to reschedule Kevin, but it looked like he popped in. He was part of a prayer session. I guess time got away, but we're so glad to to be able to have this humble man of God to join us. And we were so thank you, thank you for your patience. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we're coming out the thank gates, you, Kimberly. You. Tell everybody who's Kimberly Adair. Who is this young lady? Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> who's Kimberly Adair? I, um, well, I'm from Oklahoma, Mississippi. I, right now I live in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Amen. But number one, number one, I am a woman of God and I'm about my father's business. Amen. That's the, the main thing right now. Um, I can relate to a lot of the things that the, the brother was saying before concerning, um, what's going on in our communities and and in our churches mm. and it's time out for play yeah. and that's where that's where i am right now mm. yeah a lot of people are right there right now i mean he was speaking the truth the real truth and nothing but the mm -hmm. truth all right thank you so much all right mm -hmm. now we know it's a, it's a lot about kimberly and we're gonna we got time because you know 
we kind of we kind of unlimited once we get past the first guest, <laughs> so we okay. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. Yeah, that's right. It's my station. This Batman owns all of this. Well, of course, God is you know he's in charge <laughs> of all this, but he gave me the he gave me reins over this. So, Kimberly Kim, Kimmy Kim, you you have a question for yes. Kimberly? You you ready for the system? Absolutely, woman of God. I love that song. I know. Where were you? What kind of state of mind were you experiencing when you wrote that song? Because it sounds like to me. You are pouring out your heart, soul, and might to the Lord. Very beautiful. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, we're, um, I was noticing a lot of pain surrounding me, um, not just with the people in my life, but just people in general. And um, noticed that the, the conversation that was going on had nothing to do with helping those people who were in need you know, going through everyday challenges and everyday obstacles. But the the conversation has been on politics and um, who's the the best in this arena and that arena, but it has nothing to do with helping each other and holding each other up. And that's what that song was about. And there's so many killings going on. I'm from down south. And there's so much stuff that happens down there that nobody even hears about. Mm-hmm. And, and my that, mom is that from pain that I was I get feeling. You. Yeah. That my mom pain is that I was feeling. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I felt my heart just was bleeding for these people. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, if they don't understand, God understands. But we, we still have to, at the end of the day, we have to come together and we have to build each other up and we have to help those who can't help themselves who's mm-hmm. going to help them that's right mm. Ooh, that's, that's, that's powerful <laughs> yeah, it was wow it was. <laughs> you're so right about the south about that yeah, yeah. Especially oh yeah Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I, we visit there yearly that's yeah. right yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know we, part. my mom is from meridian well she's not okay. technically from meridian but she's from portville but we say meridian because that's the city that most people know but she's yeah. more so from um portville it's like 20 miles away from Meridian. Very country. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's about an hour and a half from where I'm from. Oh, I'm around, okay. the, um, around the Tupelo, Mississippi. Oh, area. that's where we go to uh, get there, through Tupelo to uh, mm-hmm. uh, Portville, Mississippi. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right, y'all. We be soon be airing in that area soon, too, y'all. Um Real, real Amen. soon. That's right. CTN, yeah. CTN, the Christian Television Network covers that area, Mississippi, Tennessee, all those areas. That's right. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, that song, Bleeding Hearts, was very powerful. It was, it, it was, it, it's not too many songs that touch my heart when I first hear it, but man, whoo, Kimberly. And it was another Kimberly that had wrote a song that was powerful like that that got me into Christian radio because I wasn't going this direction at first. <laughs> <laughs> I was just straight talk radio. That's right. And I was entertaining the street lit genre. So if you know what if you ever read those books, you know what what came along with that. That's right. The the glass houses, the fancy cars, the big money, the high heel shoes, and the drugs and the violence. And all that stuff came came along with that talk radio show. And it was a song like that 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 uh that convinced me to to buy a station like this one and, and get in the gospel. So so kudos to you, Kimberly, for writing that song. And we want you to tell us a little bit more about too, you know, what was your experience like when you was when you got in the studio and finished that bed, what was the, the emotions was like? So I wanna know what you know, what was the emotions like when you completed that song? Because that's a hit. Talk to me. Well actually when when I was writing it is when the emotions poured. Mm-hmm. I actually there were many tears that night when I wrote it and that's one of the um, few, very few songs that I write from beginning to end in one session. Mm. And I I knew that if I was feeling like that, <laughs> those emotions were going to come out in the, in the music. And yeah. I wanted people to feel it. Yeah. I wanted people to feel, feel that hurt and do something about it. Mm. Yeah. Batman, Batman was almost about to cry. <laughs> Two more bars. <laughs> She's done. Uh, I love it. And and I had I had a I had a question to you about um what you guys were just talking about too. Um 
you know, where we are in this country. And, and, and one of the things I want to say, and, and going back to what Kevin was saying, it's like the preachers are not really talking about going to hell anymore. You know, it's like they spend half their sermon trying to get money out of you, but they're not telling people where they're going if they keep walking the way they're walking. It's like, you know, it, it, nobody's walking walking to the to the altar and 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 crying out for the Lord. It's like people walk in and walk. I was like, wow, did I just walk in the way I walked walked out the way I walked in? I could have stayed home for this, you know. <laughs> and my wife was waiting for me to get started, <laughs> and I was like. Okay, you know, she said, yeah, you know how I feel sometimes. I said, I know. So anyway, Kimberly, I mean, I've been, I've been to a few churches the last couple of years. I just don't hear the fear from the pastor, you know, his him pouring his heart out, you know, for people to walk straight, you know, give up your 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 your, your, your deadly sins you know the stuff that's going to mm-hmm. cause you not to get in heaven you know because you because i mean when you need this because when you go when you go to the, your jobs when you go in your community a lot of us not walking into the pearly gates in our community you know it's like you know we darting bullets and you know you you know you can sit in at a light coming from a good neighborhood and get gun i was just talking to my son just last month when he told me his neighbor that he grew up with a guy that had a big heart for helping people. He was, he was, you know, I hate to tell people this sad story, but this is what we are. This guy, this is a great community where you're talking about teachers and, and mailmen and, you know, utilities workers raise their families. And this guy had retired. He was picking up his girlfriend's, his daughter's, his daughter's boyfriend from work because his, because his car wasn't running. He went to pick him up. He was only two, three blocks from his house sitting at a red light. And he looked over to his left or his right, yeah, to his left, and he, and he saw these young guys in the car. And this was like early in the morning, too, like, I guess like 7 or 8 in the morning. And they said, what are you looking at, mister, or something? And he said something, and they just started firing at him. He caught, he caught uh, shots through the car. But, but the young man survived. But he was able to drive him to the hospital, but he didn't make it. And I was like, wow, this guy, lived, you know, lived all his life, you know, retired, upstanding, you know, citizen of the community, helping others. And this is how, how he goes out, you know, because these, these kids don't have no fear of the, of the coming of the Lord It's because they, and, and they, I'm not sure these kids probably was in, in church at one time, you know, I right, am, I'm, I'm done preaching, <laughs> but <laughs> But Kimberly, do you hear enough of that though? Do do you hear the pastors begging people to get right with their lives? You know, I'm not hearing it to be honest with you guys. Not in the churches. Well, I, I hear a lot of, um, and I, I've been in quite a few churches as the um, worship leader from Memphis all the way here. And the one thing that I've noticed is that there are a lot of pastors who are afraid of offending people. Mm. And so, therefore, the word gets watered down. Yeah, there you go. Um, watered down, but not at my church, Diamond Street. I have to say that. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a uh, set up for my pastor. He talks hell in heaven. So okay, I just think it just depends on the church that you're going mm-hmm. to. Yeah, exactly. these non-denominational and, churches. You know, sometimes you, you do get a lot of watered yeah. down versions. You know, mm-hmm. but we're still looking. We're and, still looking. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Still looking. Still looking. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm good. I'm, are you to uh, my church in St. Louis? But you, that's too far. But, but actually, I'm side. actually I'm actually good with with our Bible study and our fellowship because remember we we're being led by Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is a phenomenal teacher, and um and then you know my son he writes a lot of our commentary for our for our Bible study. He's really deep in the Word, and we carry it through our Bible study all through the week. So I mean, and it comes to a point in your life really that. You don't really nobody. You don't need nobody really souping you up and scaring you. You know where we are in our life. We basically need to to start getting into the word as far as more of a study. You know, like like college. Right. You know, yeah. to understand God's um his, his principles. That. That's what we are right now. I don't need nobody really scaring me and say, "Hey, Jerry, you gonna go there?" Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, I I heard that. You know, I just want to learn the word better, <laughs> so I'll be able to serve more. Mm-hmm. You know. Heaven. One thing I'm, I know this about my pastor, this is why I go to church. I don't go to church to um, do anything but just get fed, and I go outside the church, and I see that there's not a lot of people who are willing to risk their lives to evangelize. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not really the pastor's um, job to do a lot. His job is to feed his sheep on earth, and then the sheep goes out and evangelize. So sometimes we tend to get the pastor role mixed up with evangelizing, because mm-hmm. those are two different things. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You but know. you know, some of them are kind of all over the place. Sometimes I think, yeah, too, yeah, you yeah. know, because they just, you know, I'm an evangelist, so yeah, I know my job, and I know the past. I'm not a pastor, but I can preach the word. But there's a difference. The pastor is over me; he's my covering. But mm-hmm. I go outside to, you know, to minister in love to those who are lost. That's, That's my right. Um, Amen. That's my, um, Amen. Passion. All right. Well, we got another song, and this one called Second Chance. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah, Second <laughs> Chance by Kimberly Adair. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Late Night Talk Radio with Jarvis Live Worldwide and Kimmy Kim from Relation Radio. And our special guest is Kimberly Adair. And here we go. Second Chance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. That was Second Chance by Kimberly Adair. You can find her music on Amazon. That's right, Amazon. And on my website, I just posted it. So if you're interested in picking up I Surrender by Kimberly Adair, go on out there and pick it up off of Amazon. All right, and that was, looked like that was released. Her album was released uh, August of 2016. So uh, that must have been an older album because I think she's talking about she had a new release. So Kimberly, so that, that album... I surrender. That's a that's an older piece that you did a couple of years ago. Yep, that's the the last one. I'm working on the next one. All right, awesome. Hopefully, it's going to be released in um, 
January nineteenth. Right. So can people get second chance in bleeding hearts right now? Um, they can. Um, all of the digital platforms. All right. Cool. Um, Amazon, as you said, iTunes, Spotify, Walmart dot com, Rhapsody, wherever you That's purchase right. your music, it can be found. That's right. Walmart dot com. I know that place. <laughs> we gonna be there a lot this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife's favorite store. Mm. And then she, then she just discovered. I know she liked the one in Hampton. It was so funny. We was um, we were in um Hampton, Virginia. Were we in Hampton? No, my daughter was in Hampton, Virginia, shopping at Walmart, and we was in a, some area out here, and we was actually walking down the same aisles. They talking to each other. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> is this virtual or what? So <laughs> so shout out to my daughter Sky. That's right. She be back Thanksgiving, y'all. So we're gonna hopefully we can get, get get an episode of um late night and find out what she's doing in school. So everybody a lot of people been asking how she's making out. Um so we'll get a chance to talk to see what's going on, her new life on campus. All right, we're talking to Kimberly Adair and we got Kimmy Kim from Elation Radio. All right. And we've been talking a little about, about religion, the, the makeup of the church and where a lot of our evangelism is going and where people's mindset is. And, and you know, we talked about like the unsaved and the saved. You know, sometimes, you know, I guess it depends on where you are, what you walk with God. You know, a lot of us been in church all our lives. Some of us in our 40s, our 50s. And, you know, we've been going to church for many, many moons with our grandparents. And some of our grandparents had head up their own churches. And we kind of know right from wrong. But I'll tell you, I hear so many stories, Kimberly, of, uh, of young men and women who grew up in the church. But as they got older in their teens or young, you know, young adulthood, they got into some kind of trouble. And then some of them even seen prison life. And then it wasn't until they got incarcerated until the light went off. <laughs> Why there? <laughs> you know, you know, it's like, wow. You know, and, and Kimmy, I know you've been doing radio for a while. Now you hear a lot of these testimonies. And Kimmy, Kimmy what do you think is going on sometime in, in this in this room we live in where people are still finding themselves caught up in, in, in such turmoil that they're seeing incarceration because of their sins, you know, but they, they know the Bible. Well, I do prison ministry, and a lot of them, it's not they don't know. It's just sometimes God got to get their attention, because we all can be in jail spiritually, but mm-hmm. not the physical. So they got both, the physical jail and the spiritual jail. So what I have noticed is it's more so, you know, sometimes God got to put you in a place where you can you hear. just get your attention. That's right, you speak so, to you. I really believe yeah. if you look at most of the writers of the Bible, most of them were in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Some of, that's right. Some okay. of my better letters. That's right. It was written. Yeah. In, that's right. And then they finally yeah, had quiet know. time. Basically, Paul was written in jail. Yeah. So, yeah. There's no, there's too much noise outside of the jail. He couldn't, he couldn't hear God speaking to him. All right. So Kimmy, right. Kimmy, you know, I know you write, you know, for the purpose of, of, you know, for people's salvation, you know, and, and, and that was like some political overtones was in that song because that's the state we're in right now. We, I mean, we're so plugged up to the news right now. It's like, it's almost like too much, you know, not, it's just too much. And I always feel like, like, like what we're doing, you know, these podcasters are growing and, you know, like Kim and I, we collaborate. Her, her podcast is on my network and, and, and we are trying to grow together and just keep spreading God gospel. Cause it seems like people are so hungry for more, you know, and, and again, we don't want to place the blame on the church. And you, cause you guys just explained to me what some of the pastor's roles are, but I don't know. Who, who can we, who can we point the finger to? We got to point it to somebody. Somebody, I mean, we've been overtaken by, by, by evilness. We got to step it up. How can we do that? You know, help me understand. I, I think it, it it also, it still goes back to what you were saying before the teaching. Yes. And I remember when I was, when I was younger, growing up in the country, <laughs> <laughs> my parents weren't the only ones responsible for teaching me. The people in the community also were my teachers and mm-hmm. they watched out for me. And mm. if they saw me doing something wrong or even heard of me doing something wrong, they would get me first and then they would go to my parents and then my parents would get me. And I think we've moved away from that day and age where mm-hmm. it takes a community to raise a child yeah. because 
this uh, most a lot of people now don't want you to say anything to their kids. Mm. They don't want you to correct them, and and so getting away from that the paradigm, it's we've gotten to where we are now. Mm. And I, I I remember feeling the power and the safety actually of having those prayer warriors who were looking out for me mm-hmm. and making sure that I was doing what I was supposed to do. Amen. So it, the, the, it doesn't, the, the blame doesn't lie strictly on the church. It's us as a community as well. Mm-hmm. Amen. But you know, back in the day though, Kimberly, the, the, the church was the community. You know, everything happened there. Um, yeah, the the right. meetings were there, right. um, the fellowship, mm-hmm. the, the business connections were made with the entrepreneurs. You know, the, the church was the community. If, if, if this family didn't have in the church, the church would come together, not, not as the church alone, mm-hmm. but people in the church would come together on their own and they would help. That per that family or that person that was in need. Yeah, that's right. Have those cupboards open for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah. you hear so many times people come to the church. You know, like you know, they like a paycheck away from 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 not having that, owning that partnership, their apartment anymore, and they need they need help, mm-hmm. and and then they can't get it. You know, it's not there. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they say, "Wow, you know, my family's been in this church, and blah blah blah." This, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. Mm, the state we're in right now. Um, this this country is so expensive. It's like I was listening to the pastor talk about the people in uh, Guatemala, what they going through with, you know, you know, not enough money. It's like they work all day just for two dollars and the kids can't even go to school because they have to help farm so they can make that money to be able to put food on the table. And uh, it's almost like with well, us, it's like so expensive. It's almost like. Can you eventually? Can your kids afford to move away on their own? <laughs> it's like, all right, y'all. Everybody gonna just live here, and, and when you guys graduate from college, you know, we just bring the money together. We gonna put our money together, you know, so we can survive. Mm-hmm. It's almost like um, we have to go back to to those times that the kids don't really leave until they get married. <laughs> everybody got to contribute, you know, for the survival mm-hmm. of the family. You know, because because you got people getting getting ill. And they can't go on like they used to. You know, it's like we work so hard, you know, and then the, then when you go to work, you're dealing with so much competition and you're competing with the numbers, the data, the, the you know, the person next to you. You can't even be friends with the people next to you no more because they're your competitors. You know, you're competing for that for that promotion when it raised because they got that pie system. You know, it's, it's just so much competition. It's like you don't even have to play sports no more to compete. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I really believe that prayer is often essential in your life. It is. You have a prayer yeah. life. Amen. You can build your faith. And what I have found that the bigger your prayer life, the more faith you have. With that being said, I understand that it takes the community to raise a child because that's a good point. But we also must remember that the Bible is just being prophesied that it's going to be even worse. So that's why we must continue yeah. on mm-hmm. going to serve those who don't know because, unfortunately, it's getting, I mean, Satan is on his job. That's what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. And yeah. he's now entering the church, and the church is really reflecting the world. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got a lot of them, a lot of them right now. He, he got them. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you walking in now, and people basically judging the pastor as soon as they get out their car. Wow, which one of those nice cars the pastor driving? <laughs> you know, you're hearing that. You say, wow, what a nice building. You know, am I paying for this? You know, all this judgment and, you know, it's it's, it's crazy. And then all of, a lot of these small pastors want to look like the T.D. Jakes and the Joe Olsons of the world, you know. But everybody's on different levels, you know. You all can't be on that same platform. It's crazy. All right. Well, well Kimberly, we, we want you to tell people where they can find you live. You know, we want to see you live. Where can we find Kimberly Adair live? All right. Um, my next... Um, worship experience will be with Larnell Harris. He's a five-time Grammy winner, Christian artist. I don't know if you guys remember him or not, but um, he's saying, What's the, um, I've just seen Jesus. Mm-hmm. And he does a lot of the old, old school 
gospel. I like old school. school yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So check him out. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be opening for him here in Williamsport on um, the 24th of November at the Williamsport High School. I think it's 6 o'clock. Yeah, six big auditorium. That evening. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. And for future future performances, um, people can go onto my Facebook page. It's Kimberly Adair fan page. And um, meanttoberecords.com is the website. Amen. So you say you're going to be opening for Larnell Harris? You opening for him? Yes. Okay. Wow. That's going to be big. Yeah, he's five-time Grammy Award winner. That's right. Five-time. You got to be good. Yeah. You got five of them. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they Still get a chance. So, so <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, Kimberly, so when you open for a guy like that, and you know it's going to be a lot of people going to show up to hear him and everything. So, so how do you come out mm-hmm. the gates? You know, how do you open up a... You know, do you have it in your mind how you're going to open up for him? How you going to get the crowd pumped up? You know, what's in your mind? Well, what are you first going of through? all, with, with any performance, it, it's, it's not about me. Mm-hmm. I, my prayer going in is I surrender to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do in that time. And Amen. everything goes from there. It's whatever he wants to happen in that moment. There's sometimes I'll have a whole set list done. And my band's looking at me like, wait, we didn't practice that. <laughs> Change the program. That's what the Holy Spirit does. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And I'm learning not to be afraid of that and to, and follow his, his leading. Amen. And, yeah, wow. I, I do believe that this is going to be a, a powerful night of worship. So yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That's right. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I'm trying to remember, have I ever been to Williamsport? I've been all over Pennsylvania. I'm like, Pennsylvania is so big. It's huge. We're, um, I know you know the Little League. Yeah. The Little League Baseball champ, the World Championship. Yeah, yeah. That's where we are. That's what y'all known for. So how far is that from yeah. Hershey Park? How far is from Hershey? From Hershey Park, two yeah. hours. Oh, wow. So that's still a good distance. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you closer yeah. to so you closer to the Poconos? Yep. Um, an hour and a half. Wow. Poconos. Yeah, so I have been through there then because I was coming from Pittsburgh mm-hmm. going to the Poconos. Okay. Yeah. I thought, yeah, you yeah. probably have. Yeah. Wow. Pen- yeah, Pennsylvania is so tremendously humongous. And we thought we had, you know, my kids love Pennsylvania because of Amish country because we used to go to Dutch Wonderland and Hershey Park all the year. And I was like, oh, we love, you know, it just seemed like it's just so country, like, you know, like everything's so organic, <laughs> you know, like the air is mm-hmm. fresh. We just love it. I mean, it's different from yeah, Pittsburgh. My parents enjoy it when they come up. Yeah, I mean, I don't like Pittsburgh, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Hershey Park, we love <laughs> that whole area. It's mm-hmm. tremendous. All right, so awesome. So, so Kim, you got one last question for uh, Miss Adair before we close up? Absolutely, the- I love your spirit, my sister, and your meek mouth, but you're strong. Um, yeah. Um. What would you like for your music to be a representation of? Like, how would how would you want it to influence others, even those who don't know God? Um, my music it, it comes from a place of experience. I don't write about things that I don't know about, and um, so what I'd like for people to get out of of my music is. Uh, Okay, I'll give you an example. One of my songs on one of my albums is It's Not Over. Mm, and awesome. um, that song came from an experience of a time in my life where I, I contemplated suicide. Mm. And because of that song, there's so many young people who have listened, well, not even young people, people of all ages who have listened to that song and testified how that song has gotten them past that a part of their life that was similar to mine. Mm. Sorry, Jerry, I need that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get that that's song. You can powerful. find it also on, on those places. But um, that's what I want people to get from my music. I want it to, to be a music heals. Mm-hmm. And I want it to be um, a tool for people to use in their healing process or if they need to be inspired, I have songs of inspiration. 
Yeah, and, get that. Um, yeah, get it, y'all. Faith and all of it. Yeah. So I, I, I want to, I want to help people. Mm. That's my that's, mission through my right. music. That's right. And I, I have a few other projects that I'm working on that also involve using my music. I'm, I'm working on um, building a music program in taking on Haiti mm. and um, a few other places around the the, uh, the country here in the United States. Yeah. Well, Elder Ernest Rich would be a good person for you for Haiti. He goes there twice a year. Who was that? Her pastor. I have a good friend of mine. Him and his wife, they visit Haiti twice a year on the mission trip. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I need to get your information. Yeah, connect with them. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. And they're in um, D.C., so you guys not that far from each other. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's right. It's three, Thank it's, you. That's three and a half, three and a half hour travel for you, right? I'm jealous, you guys. You guys all on the East Coast. I love East Coast. <laughs> Dairy where on where the East are you? Coast. She in St. Louis. In the Midwest. <laughs> St. Louis. You're where? Midwest. Near Midwest. Chicago, okay. Missouri. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I love the East Coast. You guys have flavor out there. You really do. We do. That's right. We got <laughs> D.C., New York, Baltimore. That's right. Seafood, yeah. all the good food, the steak. Uh, so that's the problem over here. We just think about food all the time. <laughs> right at the church. <laughs> when we're in church, look, tell her, tell her, Kimberly, when church is over, first thing is, where are we going to eat, y'all? <laughs> that's what everybody yeah, says. Exactly. Where are we going to eat, y'all? <laughs> and the good ones are jam-packed, boy. And now you better take, get your reservations in. I was looking at your song list, um, and I'm going to run through the song list on that album, I Surrender. Um, oh, of course, Bleeding Hearts is, is my song right now of all songs. But I'm going to check out Under the Piano and I Will Always Love You, just to name a few. So alone. So which one was the one? Is the one that you were just talking about, the one where, you know, you was in that place the one that is that on that album I Surrender that was, no that was actually on my first album first Voice album. of My Soul oh okay All right. um, it's I think that one was released in 2000 oh my goodness <laughs> 13 yeah. well hopefully we'll be able to keep Kimberly around uh, the, the Positive Power uh, Network for a minute and get her on the Christian party line with the ladies. Because I'm looking at your your your, your course study. Now, you, you major in psychology? Mm-hmm. I, I just finished in April with my doctorate in psychology. Oh, oh so you're the doctor. All right. Dr. Yeah. Adair <laughs> all these doctors. Yeah, you go. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a part owner of a, of a Bible college now. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Just got our accreditation in September. So we're still working on um, getting everything out there for everybody. Got waiting for Dr. Kelly to come in town so we finish it up. Yeah, that is awesome. Right. Wow. That is cool. So basically, Kimberly, where you were, what you was just talking about, was that like during the younger younger time in your life? I'm sorry, younger period in your life? You were in your 20s, 30s, something like when you was fighting with that? Yeah, it was actually, actually right around the time I was graduating from high school and um, what happened that, that depression, it, it carried on for a lot of my life. Mm. And that song came out of that place. Yeah. So that, for- there was one, at one point I, um, I was actually going to commit suicide mm. and I, no one was home. I went into the bathroom with a knife, and I put it against my wrist. And right in that moment, there was this, it's almost like the sonic boom that went through my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And it shook the door. It shook the whole, the whole house. And this is a, a brick house with concrete floor. Mm-hmm. It shook the house literally. And I dropped the knife and I, I opened the door and called out for everybody. And there was nobody, nobody was still home. Mm-hmm. And I fell to my knees right there in that moment. And I knew that, it, God has something more for me. Yeah. Mm. Saved you right there. Wow. Yeah. That's deep, deep. And and we have so many young people that's in that place right now, whether it's through medication mm-hmm. or just, you know, mm-hmm. just coping with life, no support system yeah. with their family. It's just so many. Well, I know now since you've been studying, you, pro- you probably realize there's so many, um, battles that people deal with when it comes to depression, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you know, just looking out the window, just looking outside, you know, sometimes could, could take people there. 
So I, I know you understand right. that now through your coursework. All right. Well, we appreciate having you on the show. Is there any final words, encourage we want to give our listeners? Remember, we're on Spotify, iTunes, and people you can download us at Spreaker Radio, and you, and you can find us out there on iHeartRadio, where um, it sounds really, really good. Anything you want to say? Final words for our listeners? I just want to tell everybody to um, be blessed, get into the word, God first. That's it. Amen. That's right. Study, y'all. Can't look for the pastor for encouragement all the time. He dealing. He got stuff he dealing with. <laughs> so you, yeah. you got to take it to the next level. A lot of you been going to Bible study all your life. <laughs> it's time to take it to the next level. <laughs> you pass Bible one on one, right? <laughs> and take a class. Bible college is all over the place. All right, Kimmy Kim, any final words of encouragement for our peoples, for our peeps? Well, my sister gave a powerful testimony in the yes. before, Kevin. And I just want to just say, just put God first. And if you don't know God, he's really easy to get to know. Um, church people sometimes tend to make it hard, but it's really easy. Yeah. Repent, forgive, and ask God to intervene. And just know love works. That's right. And, and I'm going to tell you, Kimmy, you always hear people say, yeah, you got to have a relationship with God. And people are like, how you do that? How, how you get that relationship? I say, go out for a walk, you know, and just talk to him. Just, you know, put your headphones on so people don't think you talk to yourself. And just start talking. Just start talking to him. And he will, he will answer back. I guarantee you. That may have a lot of conversations with God. <laughs> a lot of conversations. And and you need that because when you when you're raising when you're raising a family and you're dealing with with this society that we're dealing with right now with this this negative news, you know you 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 need to pull from some power source and that's the power source and the power is in Jesus' name. So pull from let's call on him, y'all, and build that relationship. Talk to him, y'all. Believe me, when you when you cut out all that noise that that we got going, all these distractions, you will hear him. I guarantee you. Just give him a chance. You can't put all the pressure on your pastor. You can't go in there thinking he's going to be the cheerleader because he goes, sometimes he just going to tell you the truth and then you're going to be mad. <laughs> so, 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 so I say if you're at that point in your life where you need a cheerleader, I say you need, you need study time. You need to, you need to enroll in a Bible college. It doesn't have to be PTI. It could be anyone. We got so many of them out there right now. And you may be one of those people who need to be sitting in a classroom studying a good book because you need real interpretation of it. Okay. You just can't rely sometime on your own, you know, your own self. You need help. So uh, do that. You know, take it to the next level. Okay. All right. It's time to get out of here. So, Kimmy Kim, I want to thank you for helping me out today with uh, talking to uh, Dr. Kevin Rames and Dr. Kimberly Adair. We have all these important people on the show. And God is leading them. It was, it was amazing. It was an amazing show. All right, Kimberly, but don't be a stranger. Reach out to me anytime, okay? If you need anything, just let all us right. know. Um, you know, um, we're actually going to be uh, putting on a number of um, events here for for uh, for artists like yourself to be to uh, to be filmed live for uh, a lot of you know we do television and and film work. You see anything you think you may be interested? Hit us up. I'm only three and a half hours from you. <laughs> There's no, all right, thank you so right. much for having That's me. That's right. Come on out and hang out with the Batman. You're welcome. All right, everybody. We appreciate right. everybody checking us out. Don't forget you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and iHeartRadio and Spreaker Radio. You can listen to the show over and over and over again. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. And I'm the Batman. All right, everybody. All right, don't forget, y'all, Tuesday night we got... Dr. Paul Kelly going to be joining us. That's right. Pastor's time. Pastor's time is going to be here. That's right. Tuesday night at 9.15. Check out Pastor's time. That's right. We're going to be starting out with some, some good scripture teaching. Bible study. That's right. We got some commentary written by Brandon Roy Sampson. So he's going to be here on Friday. We hope he'll be here on Friday. We got a lot of people. So come on out and join us on Friday nights starting at 10 o'clock with Next Man Up. Which leads into Late Night with Jervis Live and Paula G, which leads into the Christian Party Line with the ladies of radio. That's right, Shay Samuels, our moderator. We got Chanel Lynn Malloy, the actress. We got Patrice Jackson, the entrepreneur, and Paula G, the voice, Lady Wisdom. So come on out, hang out with us, y'all, all the way till one o'clock in the morning. That's right, good radio. 
good Bible teaching radio right here on Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Take care, everybody. Take it away, robot. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live, the worldwide podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Royce Live, worldwide. This is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked.